now that we know what is a VCG mechanism, let us uh, now discuss some of its properties in the context of combinatorial auctions. Just to remind you, the combinatorial auction uh, is uh, those kind of auction where, um, uh, where every agent has some valuation on a combination of this object. So there are, let's say, m indivisible objects uh, in this context and uh, every agent has a valuation for a subset of these objects. So we can denote uh, by this set omega the set of all possible subsets of M which is nothing but the power set of, of M. So we will also use the term bundle to uh, denote a subset of these objects. And now what um, the, the theta i or the type in this context it is defined in the following way. So you take this uh, any of this subset from this set uh, omega and theta i will actually map that uh, subset into a uh, into the set of real numbers. So one can say that the uh, so if you have a specific subset s uh, of these objects, theta i of s is essentially telling you how much this agent values that particular subset of these objects. Fair enough. Now in this context, even though we uh, the mapping. Uh, it is mapping to the whole of real line, we will only focus on the non-negative part of the real line. So, which means that this, uh, this uh, types or the valuation of these agents are always non-negative. This is also sometimes referred to as uh, the objects that are goods. That is, it is always going to give you non-negative uh, valuation. Uh, it can give you a zero valuation in, in which case you don't really want that object, but it can can never give you negative uh, valuation. So contrast this with some uh, objects like uh, bags. Uh, I mean, the, the name comes uh, very similarly like goods. Uh, if uh, if that object, uh, if you if allocated to you, let's say some task that is allocated to you, uh, that task is essentially costly. So therefore, you don't have a positive valuation for it. Rather, you have a negative value for it. So those kind of uh, settings we are uh, uh, excluding from our di discussion of combinatorial auctions. So in this setup, the allocation uh, of this uh, uh, allocation in the combinatorial uh, uh, auction is nothing but a partition of these objects. And how is this partition uh, defined? So it's a partition of those m objects into n plus one bins. So each of these bins uh, from 1 to n are actually corresponding to which bundle uh, is uh, goes to which agent uh, and the 0th uh, bundle is nothing but the that set of objects which are unallocated. And the, all these AIs and AJ, AJs are disjoint uh, so therefore um, if an object goes to a specific agent it, does, it cannot go to some other agent. And of course, uh, when we take the union of all these uh, sets, all these uh, uh, components of this allocation, uh, this should certainly be equal to M. That is, all objects are exactly in one of this uh, partition. So let us uh, assume that A is the set of all such allocations. Uh, so all such allocations which does this partition of these objects into N plus 1 bins. Okay, so we are also going to assume if, if a specific agent does not get any object, that is its uh, allocated uh, partition is uh, the empty set, then its valuation is going to be zero. So this is, uh, this is quite natural. And in addition, we are also going to assume that these valuations are selfish. What does that mean? So uh, there is no, no dependency across multiple allocations. So if agent I gets uh, an allocation of AI, its valuation only depends on AI. Uh, what can be a different situation? So perhaps uh, agent I and agent J are in some sense interrelated. They might be good friends and then uh, uh, the, the valuation that one agent gets might not just depend on its own allocation but it also depends on the uh, other uh, agent's allocation. So we are excluding that. So. It, uh, we are just focusing on selfish valuation that your type only uh, your uh, uh, valuation only depends on your allocation okay so in this uh, context uh, where we are looking at this uh, allocation of goods the vcg payment uh, of, of our agent that gets no object in the efficient allocation is zero so we know that the vcg mechanism uh, always uh, picks the efficient allocation that is the allocation that maximizes the sum of these uh, valuations of all the agents uh, 
but suppose in that efficient allocation an agent gets no object uh, so it's uh, allocation set so let's say yeah, this is agent i whose allocation in this optimal uh, in this uh, uh, efficient allocation is empty so in that case the 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 VCG payment will also be equal to zero. That is the claim of uh, uh, claim that we are making. So how should we prove it? So uh, we first look at so because this is a just allocation of goods, uh, one can actually uh, look at two different scenarios. So first scenario is when all the agents are present because we will need that uh, in the in defining the VCG payment. So where all the agents are present and we are picking that uh, allocation which maximizes the sum of the value so uh, notice that because these are independent private values we can just re write that as the theta g of a itself you can use this notation instead of writing it uh, in the value form uh, similarly uh, we can also look at the optimal uh, the uh, the efficient allocation excluding agent i so suppose agent uh, i was not present in that uh, setup what will be the that allocation which maximizes the sum of the uh, uh, sum of the values of all the other agents. Now, notice that what we are doing here is that we are looking at the same allocation set. So, which means that we still have this n uh, n plus one uh, length vector. So, an allocation is nothing but a n plus one length vector. But now that uh, agent i is not present, we can uh, deterministically say that this a i is going to be empty. So in, uh, in all these allocations, when we are talking about a minus i star, uh, in all these allocations, that ith agent's allocation is going to be null. So that is another way of representing this. And this is possible because we are talking about uh, the allocation of goods. I mean, just an allocation of certain objects. If you look at some of the textbooks, you will find that this kind of a setup can be put under a very uh, much more general uh, setting. Uh, after removing removing a specific agent the choice set uh, is essentially is monotonically decreasing uh, so that that property that more general property is known as the choice set monotonicity but uh, in, without going into it we are just focusing our uh, attention to the uh, combinatorial allocation of uh, of uh, goods and that is uh, uh, in that setting we can very easily see that we can actually um, define these allocations uh, in the following in the same way so the allocations still fall in the same set a yet we are going to uh, denote uh, the allocation excluding agent i uh, just by putting that ith uh, component of that allocation to be always equal to null now what we uh, have already seen is that uh, the the vcg payment is always going to be non negative and that is something that we have noticed, uh, we have uh, argued in the previous module. Now, uh, we are going to show the other other direction. So, we will show that uh, this BIVCG is also going to be non-positive uh, uh, in, in this specific case where the allocation of agent I is null in the efficient allocation. So, how should we do that? So, let us write down the PIVCG again. Now, uh, we know that this is going to be the sum of uh, the valuations of all the agents when agent i is not present. And here, we are looking at the sum of all the other agents when agent i is present and we are picking the efficient allocation. The only thing is that the uh, in that efficient allocation, agent i gets, a, uh, gets nothing. So, we uh, know because of the because of the way we have uh, defined this a in this, uh, in this uh, world without agent i, uh, we can uh, define the the type because in uh, in uh, in this world of a minus i star the ith component uh, of this allocation is always going to be null and therefore theta i of null is going to be zero so uh, we are going to add this term uh, to this uh, to this expression to this expression on the right hand side and also going to subtract out this theta i a i star which is the the valuation of agent i in the efficient allocation and by definition this is going to be equal to zero so now what we what we get here is uh, when we uh, add this term uh, to this term then we get the the sum over all agents including agent i uh, for this a minus i star and the same thing when a star uh, over a star 
Now this uh, quantity, if we look carefully, uh, this is the sum of the valuation of all the agents, uh, including agent I, and A star by definition maximizes this term. So for any other allocation that you can uh, you can look at, this is uh, this sum is always going to be larger, or at least as much as the uh, the valuation, the sum of the valuation in the other uh, allocation. So we can clearly write that this is uh, non-positive, and that essentially proves our result. So we have already shown that the PI VCG um, is non-negative, and now we are showing that the same uh, PI VCG for this particular agent I. Who got no nothing allocated in the efficient allocation will be non-positive, so therefore it, it must be equal to zero. So that is what we wanted to. All right. So let us now look at a, a different property called the individual rationality property. So intuitively it means that uh, the agents should be uh, voluntarily participating in this mechanism. If uh, if they participate, then they should get some non-negative utility. Uh, under no circumstances they they should get uh, the agent should get any negative payoff so the mechanism uh, formally we can define it in the following way that uh, this mechanism is individually rational if you look at the the valuation minus the payment uh, under that mechanism for this uh, reported types of theta this should be non negative for every theta so any type profile that you look at uh, it should be non-negative and it should also be true for all agents i.e. Now again we can make this uh, make a similar claim that if if the allocation if we are looking only of uh, about uh, allocation of goods the combinatorial allocation of goods then VCG mechanism is definitely going to be individually rational. So again uh, you might find a, uh, a very analogous result in, in some text uh, or uh, some other uh, courses uh, which uh, uh, talks about that uh, th those kind of monotonicity the choice set monotonicity and also uh, condition that there is no negative externality which we actually ensure by uh, looking only at the goods so uh, vcg mechanism uh, sat uh, satisfies individual rationality under those general conditions but here we are for our simplicity we are looking at a very specific set which satisfies those two properties so what we have to prove here is that the utility for every agent is non-negative. That is how uh, in, uh, individual rationality is defined. So first uh, look at, so pick some arbitrary agent I and look at its utility and then expand out the, uh, the payment uh, function, the payment uh, formula. Now what we will get, we will get a, a very similar term where um, the uh, the first term is essentially the sum of the values of all the agents at that uh, opti uh, at that uh, efficient allocation, and in the second term we have all the sum uh, all the agents, uh, the sum of all the agents except agent I, uh, in that optimal allocation excluding agent I. So now we are, what we are going to do we are going to do a very si a similar trick we are going to add and subtract this uh, quantity theta i a minus i star as before a minus i star is nothing but that allocation it is still living in that set a with the ith component being identically equal to uh, now so if we look at that so we know that this is going to be exactly equal to zero so uh, what advantage it gives us is that we can now club these two terms together and we can say that that is nothing but the sum of all the agents the valuation sum of the valuations of all the agents including agent i but under this uh, different allocation which is a minus i star now by definition we know that this uh, this difference uh, what we have shown here is non negative and this term the second term is always going to be uh, non negative as well so actually this will be exactly equal to zero so uh, together this term is always going to be in, non-negative so therefore because uh, we have chosen this uh, agent uh, i to be arbitrary um, this is definitely going to be true this non-negativity is going to be true for all agents in the player set so that shows that uh, under these conditions uh, vcg mechanism is actually individually rational